I've got a very, very powerful, yet extremely simple and easy to understand point for you that will help you expose Muhammad whenever there's breaking news of mob violence over allegations of blasphemy. You'll want to keep this handy. You want to keep this in your tool belt because we all know that more mob violence is coming in places like Pakistan. Now, in several of my videos, when we're examining someone's claim that mob violence against so-called blasphemers has nothing to do with Islam, I quote passages like Sunan Abu Dawood 4361, where a man brutally murders his slave girl, who was also the mother of his children, for the crime of insulting Muhammad. But there's something in this passage that I've never pointed out, and once you see it, you'll understand why Muhammad is the one to blame for vigilante violence in Islam, and you'll be able to show Muslims why their prophet is directly responsible for the mob violence we see in the Muslim world. Let's read the passage, and then we'll focus on something terrible that often gets overlooked. Sunan Abu Dawood, 4361. It was narrated that Ikrama said, Ibn Abbas told us that a blind man had a female slave, she was his slave girl, his sex slave, who had borne him a child. So, like Muhammad, this man had sex with his slave girl and got her pregnant, who reviled the prophet and disparaged him, and he told her not to do that, but she did not stop, and he rebuked her, but she paid no heed. One night she started to disparage and revile the prophet, so he took a dagger and put it in her stomach, and pressed on it, and killed her. There fell between her legs a child who was smeared with the blood that was there. The next morning mention of that was made to the prophet, and he assembled the people and said, By Allah I adjure the man who did this to stand up. The blind man stood up and came through the people, trembling, and he came and sat before the prophet. He said, O Messenger of Allah, I am the one who did it. She used to revile you and disparage you, and I told her not to do it, but she did not stop. And I rebuked her, but she paid no heed. I have two sons from her, who are like two pearls, and she was good to me. Last night she started to revile you and disparage you, and I took a dagger and placed it on her stomach, and I pressed on it until I killed her. The prophet said, Bear witness that no retaliation is due for her blood. This story is so horrible that it's easy to overlook the connection to mob violence in the world today. And the way the Hadith is written, it's easy to miss the problem. The way the Hadith is written, we're told that the slave girl insulted Muhammad and that there was no retaliation for her murder because she had insulted Muhammad. So the takeaway is that it's okay to murder someone for insulting Muhammad. That's bad enough, but take a closer look and you'll see that it's actually much, much worse. Think about this. How do we know what the slave girl did? How do we know that she insulted Muhammad? The only evidence against her is the testimony of her slave master who brutally murdered her. The only evidence against her comes from her killer. Think about it from the perspective of an investigation. Muslims find the body of a girl who's been stabbed to death. They tell Muhammad. Muhammad says, whoever did this, stand up now. The murderer knows that it's only a matter of seconds before someone says, hey, that's so-and-so's slave girl. They argue a lot, and now she's dead. So he stands up and says, yes, I brutally murdered her. But I couldn't help myself because she insulted you. And the man gets away with murder. Muhammad says, no retaliation for the murder. After all, she made fun of me. Now, maybe she did make fun of Muhammad. Who can blame her? He's the most obvious false prophet in history. But again, how do we know that she said anything about Muhammad? How do we know that her master didn't murder her for a completely different reason. How do we know that he didn't murder her for burning his falafel, or for calling him a loser, or for laughing at the size of his bank account? 
He could have murdered her for anything and then claimed that she insulted Muhammad, knowing that this would give him the best chance of getting away with murder. Muhammad set a very dangerous precedent here. How many times have we heard about a mob brutally murdering a man or a woman for blasphemy in Pakistan, and it turned out that someone from the mob had falsely accused the man or the woman, or that the only evidence against the man or the woman was the testimony of someone that he or she had been arguing with? We've seen that over and over and over again. Why do people keep getting away with murder by mob? Because of Muhammad. People in Pakistan know that if you have a disagreement with someone, especially with a Christian or a Hindu, all you have to do is scream, help, help brothers and sisters. This man just insulted Muhammad. This man burned a Quran. And a mob will form and beat him to death for you. And the government can't really fix the problem because the problem comes directly from Muhammad. According to Muhammad, all you have to do is simply claim that someone insulted him and you get a free pass for murder. So that's something you'll want to share whenever there's breaking news of mob violence for blasphemy in the Muslim world. If you'd like a picture of Sunan Abu Dawud 4361 in English and Arabic, your old pal D. Wood has once again got you covered. The link is in the description box. Click the link, save the source, and keep it handy. Because believe it or not, someone's going to lie to you about this. This is a power of religion, there's a reason to it. Yeah? Yeah? Yeah?